Joseph Stalin once said, it's not who votes that counts, it's who counts the votes. I'm Joe. Today's bullshit is rampant election fraud in the United States. Today, we have a special episode right before our National Election Day. Investigative journalist Brad Friedman joins us here in the studio via phone. Political commentator, broadcaster, author, Commonwealth Institute fellow, and the publisher and executive editor of the Brad blog, he's been at the forefront of documenting and exposing election fraud in the United States for more than a decade. Brad is 2010's Project Censored Award winner, recognized for outstanding investigative journalism, for his coverage of the mysterious death of Mike Connell, Carl Rove's election thief. Called the Paul Revere of the election integrity fight, Brad has been interviewed by every major broadcast and cable news network, as well as just about any newspaper you can think of. There is no better person on the planet to talk about election fraud and vote suppression in the U.S. In a nutshell, vote suppression is exactly what it sounds like, keeping certain people from voting. This year, we've seen aggressive clampdowns on early voting, registration drives, attempts to purge millions of legitimate voters, and expanding use of strict voter ID laws. We're fortunate to have Brad with us by phone, so let's get started. Brad, thank you for joining us. Hey guys, how are you? Good. Could be better. Brad, you've been investigating election fraud for over 10 years. What was the tipping point that sent you down this path? Well, you know, I think it was really the 2004 election uh, and the disaster that took place in Ohio and elsewhere in the country. Uh, and really, it was the media's response, or should I say a lack of response in the corporate media to what had happened uh, in Ohio and in some of these other states, uh, when, you know, the, the election, the presidential election was clearly gamed from all sides. Uh, and uh, and when I mean from all sides, I mean you know the, the voting machines, access to the polls, uh, the tabulation of ballots afterwards, all of that. And it was amazing to me uh, how disinterested the media uh, became, the corporate media became, pretty much as soon as John Kerry broke his promise. Uh, he had previously promised to count every ballot uh, before conceding. Uh, but instead, you know, within 24 hours after the election, he simply conceded. And the media decided they, you know, weren't interested in covering it anymore because, as I was told, uh, even by some in the media, uh, in the big mainstream corporate media, well, you know, if, if the guy who has the most to stand from this isn't interested, why should we be? And it just blew my mind because I thought, well, you know, John Kerry doesn't have the most to, to gain from this. The American people have the most to gain from this. This isn't his election. This is ours. And it was kind of mind-blowing that the corporate mainstream media didn't seem to give a damn about that. Hmm. Do you think maybe the corporate news skirted the issue because uh, it might be too depressing and that they'll lose viewership? Uh. You know, I, I, I can't, I, I don't think it was because it would depress people. You know what? Maybe it was. I mean, it's certainly the corporate media is interested in ratings. Um, but no, I, I think that, you know, the corporate media, the way, the way they cover elections, they cover the horse race, they don't cover the track conditions as we do at Pradblog.com. Uh, and, you know, basically it's predictable if a, uh, a candidate concedes the media generally consider themselves done with covering that race, even though a concession has absolutely no meaning whatsoever, no legal meaning. Uh, but the media, they take their cues from the politicians, and uh, they've been doing so for years. Uh, you know, that's what they cover each day, whatever it is the politicians want them to cover, whatever it is the, the White House's message of the day or the Republicans' message of the day. 
So, uh, and I also think that uh, they, just like John Kerry, are, you know, concerned that if they question the results of these often unverifiable voting systems, they'll be described as conspiracy theorists and, you know, wearing tinfoil hats. And there is some truth to that, because we saw, you know, if you look back at 2000, uh, what happened to Al Gore and Joe Lieberman when they asked for recounts in an election that it appears they actually won, not just nationally, but also in the state of Florida. Uh, you know, they, Gore and Lieberman were called sore losers and conspiracy theorists and everything else. And the fact is, they did win in Florida. Uh, so that's kind of the, the, the dirty politics at play uh, that uh, not only politicians are frightened of, but apparently so is the mainstream corporate mm. media. How does what you're seeing now for the 2014 midterms compare to past national elections? I hate to say it. But the system is getting worse and worse and worse. And the reason is, is because Republicans uh, are getting more and more aggressive and brazen in their attempts to suppress the vote. Now, when it comes to you know, covering elections, people who read bradblog.com know that uh, on this stuff, I'm nonpartisan. I'll go to bat for a, a, you know, a right-wing Tea Party Republican like Alan West uh, you know, in Florida or Joe Miller up in Alaska if they are screwed by the electoral system. I don't care. I think everyone has a right to vote. Every voter has a right to have that vote counted, counted accurately, and in a way that they can know it's counted accurately. So, uh, to me, I support the voters, not any particular party. However, with that said, I'm also more than happy to call out the political parties uh, if they are the ones gaming the system. And generally, uh, it has been the Republicans gaming the system, at least when it comes to voter suppression laws that are being passed now all over the country, uh, when it comes to restrictions on voting by legal voters. It's Republicans now doing it in state after state. So that's sort of the front-end gaming of the system, where you keep uh, legal voters from being able to cast their vote. And then you get to the back end, you know, the counting of those votes. And in, in that regard, uh, it really is both Republicans and Democrats alike who have been, uh, who have favored these unverifiable, uh, uh, you know, secret vote counting systems that have been in place now for 10 years that still don't work, that still don't allow the public to oversee their own elections. Um, so, you know, it's bad on the front end trying to cast your vote, and it's bad on the back end now uh, trying to oversee the counting of that uh, vote if you're lucky enough to have been able to cast it. So it's, it's not good out there right now, i, I got to say. Mm. Yeah. So... What are some of the most common voter suppression tactics? Well, the big one that we're seeing this year, uh, really, too, is uh, suppression laws that limit uh, early voting. And I'm not a big fan of early voting. Uh, I think if you can, you need to vote on Election Day. That said, a lot of people can't vote on Election Day, uh, or it's, you know, the lines are simply too long, etc. Well, Republicans have been doing away with early voting days, and specifically, you know, days they know that a lot of Democrats like to cast their vote, like the Sunday before the election, which uh, folks in the African-American community have taken to calling souls to the polls day, when, the, you know, the churches encourage people to go out and vote on the Sunday before elections. Well, Republicans can't have that. So they're just doing away with uh, the uh, early voting on the Sunday before the elections. They're doing that in North Carolina, in Ohio, in Georgia, and in other states. So we're seeing that, and really the big one, uh, which is these photo ID voting restrictions that are being put in place by Republicans all over the country, even though they are discriminatory, even though this has been shown in you know trial after trial that it's meant to keep legitimate votes from being cast rather than stop fraudulent ones um, and uh, you know I, I'm hopeful still the Supreme Court will shut this down once and for all uh, next year but for now you know in places like Texas 600,000 legally registered voters uh, who have voted there for years many of them who have lived there for decades were born there 
Uh, a 93-year-old veteran uh, the other day was told he could not vote under this new, uh, more uh, strict uh, photo ID restriction that Texas has now put in place, even though a court has found it to be unconstitutional and discriminatory. The Supreme Court let it go for this election only, for now, while the appeal moves forward. But it's really appalling. I, people have died for this goddamn right in this country. Uh, and to see people told they cannot vote uh, under a, you know, just a blatant lie that it is meant to stop voter fraud is absolutely maddening, and uh, it should infuriate every American, including, by the way, the right-wing Republicans and Tea Party folks who pretend to give a damn about the Constitution. I mean, that Texas law was found unconstitutional to be an unconstitutional poll tax, a violation of the 24th Amendment after a full year-long trial. Uh, and yet you've got right-wing uh, Tea Partiers down there going, yay, we, we want this law, unconstitutional or not, we don't care. So it, it's really appalling. But that's, that's the big one that's going on, uh, at least uh, in 2014. Well, they're claiming we need these IDs to protect the integrity of the ballot. What would you say to those making that claim? <laughs> I'd say either they are uh, lying or they don't know what they're talking about. Because the fact is, in case after case, trial after trial, uh, these Republican uh, states like Texas have been unable to show uh, any uh, fraud that would be deterred by photo ID voting restrictions. Now, don't get me wrong. There is, a, a, you know, some fraud in the system by voters. Not a lot of voter fraud, but there is some. Most of it is done by absentee ballot. But polling place photo ID restrictions have nothing to do with absentee voting. So down in Texas, for example, uh, the state of Texas, who has had a voter ID law in place since 2003, but now they want it to be really, really strict, uh, narrow, uh, handful of allowable IDs, they've had this voter ID law in place for 10 years, and they were able to show just two cases of uh, the type of, uh, of fraud that, that could be deterred by a photo ID, which is polling place impersonation, they were only able to show two cases out of more than 20 million votes cast in the state of uh, Texas over the past decade. So to stop those you know, two fraudulent votes, they're willing to disenfranchise at least 600,000 perfectly legal voters. Yeah, Expanding on your point from Texas, Justin Levitt took a look at 1 billion votes and was only able to find 31 counts of voter fraud. That was, yeah, that was across the, uh, that was across the entire country. 1 billion, uh, right, 1 billion votes cast over the past 14 years, 31 cases that might be deterred by photo ID restrictions. I mean, what these guys are doing, these bad guys, and they are bad guys in this case, what they're doing is counting on uh, the public being misinformed. And they are. The public has no idea uh, that, you know, how these laws work. They hear voter ID and they think, well, what's wrong with that? You need one to get on a plane. You need one to buy a beer. Uh, you don't need one to get on a plane, by the way. You don't need one to buy a beer. I have, uh, haven't been forced to show my photo ID for I don't know how many years when buying beer. Um, those are just lies, and they're misinforming people. And the fact of the matter is all 50 states, by federal law, already require that everyone show ID when registering to vote. Uh, and the majority of states already require ID when voting. It's cool. It's okay. As long as there's, you know, the types of ID out there that people actually have. Social security uh, uh, cards, birth certificates, bank statements, uh, utility bills, and so forth. That's what's already required in Texas, but they just had to make it harder because they, you know, too many Democrats were slipping by and voting. They had to stop that. So that's what we're seeing across the country. And the public is dreadfully misinformed about it. Yeah, I can attest to Facebook users being misinformed. While we're on the topic, let's talk about cross-check. 
Ah, oh, cross check. Well, you know what? I, we're only just learning about this, uh, thanks to uh, our friend Greg Pallast, uh, who, who just put out this uh, report on cross check. Uh, we don't know a lot about it yet because it is uh, kept secret pretty much everywhere. But I can tell you who put it in place. I can tell you that it was put in place by one of these uh, voter fraud fraudsters by the name of Chris Kobach. Uh, who, who is trying to? He's the, now the Secretary of State of Kansas. Uh, he's we, we're trying to keep uh, his own voters, legal voters, from being able to cast their vote. He ran on the premise of stopping voter fraud. Uh, well, in the what is it, four or six years he's been Secretary of State, he has found almost zero voter fraud in the state of Kansas. He pretended that there was illegal aliens crossing the border to vote. Uh, the guy's a big liar, let me put it to you frankly. Uh, and he's the one who helped create this cross-check system where states compare uh, 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 you know, voter registration records from one state to the next. And as Greg Pallast points out, a lot of the people who are shown as being duplicate voters registered in you know, two different states, for example, if you look a little bit closer, you find out that those you know, John Smith in one state uh, has a middle initial, you know, Q, and John Smith in another state has the middle name uh, George. They're not matches, and yet this information is now being used to challenge millions of voters, and as Greg points out, uh, millions of disproportionately minority voters once again are, look as if they're going to be the, the, the biggest victims of this latest right-wing scam. Yeah. It's a pretty ugly scam by Kobach. My favorite part of their own sales deck. Social security numbers may or may not match. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, basically, they're looking for a reason to challenge voters. Because anything you can do on Election Day, anything you can do to hold up the lines, to make it harder for people to vote. People drive by, oh, man, this is a six-hour line. I can't take off work for six hours. means that the votes are going to be suppressed. And that's what these guys are doing. I, you know, again, I hate to say it, but it's Republicans doing it in state after state. They want people to not be able to vote. And I find that goddamn appalling, to be frank. Yeah, we do, too. Good. Changing gears here a bit, we recently put together a video about the uh, unprecedented amount of dark money in this election year. Has all that money had any impact on what you're seeing this year? Yeah, I mean, the game has changed. Uh, since 2010, the game has changed, and uh, the Citizens United decision, uh, and then uh, more recently the McCutcheon decision, uh, at the Supreme Court, and it has basically allowed uh, a, a billionaire billionaire oligarchy to take over our electoral system. You can't run for office right now unless you have your own millionaire or billionaire, basically, to back you. Uh, it, it's appalling. It's changed, you know, not just the way that elections are run, but, you know, the way that candidates uh, support or oppose various issues. I'll give you one example real quick. Because uh, Sheldon Whitehouse, senator um, uh, from Vermont, had a great uh, uh, sort of a, a great story to tell on this uh, a few months ago. You know, back in as as recently as 2008, you had candidates, Republican candidates for office like George Bush, uh, Sarah Palin, Mitt Romney, John McCain, all of whom were concerned about global warming and wanted to do something about this very serious problem. Uh, all of a sudden, 2010 comes around, Citizens United passes, and it's as if those previous positions that we have on videotape never existed. Now all of those very same politicians on the right are saying, oh, what global warming? There's no global warming. The globe's getting cooler. I don't know what you're talking about. And they all have one thing in common. They get huge millions and billions from the fossil fuel industries, from the Koch brothers, etc. So they are no longer allowed. If you're a Republican, you will be challenged in a primary if you, you know, go along with the stuff that we know from science in, in regard to, uh, to global warming now. So you know, that's just one example of how Citizens United and money in politics 
has completely changed the playing field from the way elections are run uh, to the way position uh, to, to the way politicians support or uh, or oppose various positions. Hmm. Now, do you think some of that huge pool of money is finding its way to suppressing the mm-hmm. vote? Yeah, no, it, it, it doesn't uh, require speculation at all. If I had to speculate, I, I, I wouldn't. But I can tell you this, that uh, Coke money, uh, Coke Brothers money, uh, is invested in ALEX, the American Legislative Exchange Committee, uh, Commission Committee. ALEC has been uh, pushing these photo ID laws across the country now for years. ALEC was funded by, uh, founded by a guy named Paul Weyrich, uh, who back in 1980, there's some great video, you can find it on, uh, on, on bradblog.com or on YouTube, of Paul Weyrich. Now many of our Christians have what I call the goo-goo syndrome. Good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. He was talking about voter suppression. This guy, he's a a right-wing demigod still to this day. He died a few years ago, but he's still regarded as as a god to these folks. And there he is in 1980 uh, giving the Rosetta Stone of modern-day voter suppression, which is keep certain people from casting their vote. He founded ALEC. ALEC is funded by the Koch brothers. ALEC is, uh, you know, the one who has been pushing these photo ID laws around the country. It's not speculative at all. It is absolutely the millionaires and billionaires and and corporatocracy that is uh, trying to keep the public from being able to cast their votes. All right. So then, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being rampant and severe election fraud, how do you rate 2014 so far? Do you consider keeping people from being able to cast their vote to be fraud? Mm, yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, on the voter suppression level, you know, we're certainly up at, uh, you know, seven or eight. I can't go up to 10 because, you know, G- uh, 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 Jim Crow was 10. But that's where we are now. We are seeing the worst voter suppression since the Jim Crow era. So we're, we're getting closer to 10 in that regard uh, as far as voter suppression goes. Uh, as far as fraud, you know, again, it's not voter fraud that you've got to worry about. By and large, the voters are doing fine. It's election fraud. It's the insiders. It's the gaming of the, uh, the rules in advance through, you know, things like photo ID restrictions or limiting uh, early voting. Uh, or it's the ability, whether they're doing it or not, the ability to game the uh, the results on the back end. And that part, we don't know anything about yet, and we won't until they, uh, you know, reveal the results. And even then, we may or may not, usually may not, uh, be able to know if the election was, uh, you know, legitimately tabulated by these computers and if it reflects the intent of the voters or not. That's the problem with these systems. Whether they are gamed or not, we, the people, the public, cannot know if they've been gamed or not. And that, I would argue, is a great threat to democracy because it absolutely devastates uh, confidence uh, in the electorate, and, and it should. So with that in mind, do you have any predictions for 2016? Uh, I don't really do predictions, but um, you know, I, I, I can tell you for sure that the people who want to game the system are not going to stop wanting to game the system between now and 2016. And that's why, uh, and they never will, by the way, uh, but that's why you need a system that is fully public, that is fully transparent, that can be overseen. Uh, by we the people, and uh, that's the only way you can have a shot at uh, keeping the bad guys from being able to game elections. You know, gaming elections is nothing new. It's happened since the beginning of democracy. It's happened since the beginning of this country. 
uh, our job, I, I would argue, as uh, citizens, is to try and make it as absolutely difficult for the bad guys to game the system and as absolutely easy uh, to catch the bad guys gaming that system. And again, that's why I call for hand-marked, hand-counted paper ballots at the precinct on election night with uh, results you know, posted right there at the precinct, all the parties, all the video cameras rolling, the most public process possible before those ballots ever move anywhere. Bad guys are going to be bad. Our job is to stop it and to make it hard for them by making the, all of the election processes as absolutely transparent as possible. So in a perfect world where Brad Friedman gets what he wants to fix the system, are paper ballots the solution? Uh, I, yeah, I always love when, when somebody says, what would you do if you were king of democracy? But um, <laughs> seems somewhat contradictory. But yeah, no, yeah, if I was in charge, uh, that's what I would want, a transparent system. And so far, while I'm open to any and all ideas, uh, so far, hand-counted, hand-paper ballots uh, seem to me the most transparent and make the most sense. Um, and that's absolutely what I would uh, work towards putting in place. I wouldn't do it overnight, by the way. I hear a lot of hand, uh, hand count proponents saying, do away with the machines today and hand count tomorrow. Uh, no, I think we've got to see how that works. We haven't done that in this country in a while. Uh, there are still pockets of, of, of places around the country that do it. Forty percent of the towns, for example, in New Hampshire, still hand count at the precinct on election night. It's a great civic activity. Everybody turns out. Uh, those towns, those hand count towns uh, in New Hampshire are often done with uh, their tabulation well before the Diebold optical scan uh, counties are done. Um, so there's you know, reason to believe that hand counted paper ballots are the best way to go. Um, but I would, you know, I'd put that in place slowly. I'd put in pilot tests and make sure this is the way to go. I will tell you one thing I would do if I was Secretary of Democracy in this country. Uh, I would demand that every uh, touchscreen voting system, 100% unverifiable as they are, I would demand that those be trashed immediately and that everybody vote on a, on a, a hand-marked paper ballot. Wow. Yeah, really informative stuff. Thank you so much for taking the time for us. This really is next level bullshit. And I'm glad you brought up Jim Crow. We see it the same way. Oh, no question about it. No question about it. We're seeing stuff that we have not seen since Jim Crow. And it's, it's really fucking appalling. So thanks for, thanks for pointing that up. And by the way, guys, thanks for uh, taking uh, extraordinary measures here to allow me to do it on, on phone instead of Skype. Uh, sorry about that. I no, hope it's okay. Yeah, for absolutely. It's no problem. Well, there it is, guys, straight from the leading expert on election fraud. Our political system is just getting more and more fucked up. Support Brad Friedman and his efforts on behalf of voters. Visit bradblog.com to stay informed. Chris Kobach and every politician that supports these dirty tricks, you're next level bullshit. And there it is, episode 16 in the can. I'd like to thank all our viewers and commenters for your support. We'll see you on Wednesday with probably more election bullshit. If you have an idea for something we should cover in season two, send us a tweet with hashtag NLBS or tell us what you think is next level bullshit in your own YouTube video. If we like it, we'll use it. You can also email me ideas at joe at nextlevelbullshit.com. We'll see you on Wednesday with another episode. In the meantime, follow us on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, and watch all our shows on nextlevelbullshit.com. Until then, to our U.S. viewers, good luck trying to vote tomorrow. And don't forget your ID.